Hi, I'm John and welcome to Half Dozen Homestead. Um, the last number of videos I've done have been about the pond. And I love the pond, but unfortunately we've had nothing but issues trying to get it all the way filled. So we're gonna take a step back from that. Um, I have a couple ideas on how to fix it, but we're in the thick of summer and I don't wanna be spending every day on the pond projects as much as I love it. So today what we're gonna work on is just getting the pond ready for the rest of summer, getting the fountain going. Um, we're gonna put a little bit of blue dye in the pond just to really clean it up, make it look a lot nicer. Every year we have the fountain going and this year we pulled the fountain up, checked it out and found out that the mice were hungry this fall and the mice had chewed the cord to bits. Got exposed wire and copper here, 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 here. And since we don't like to mix electricity and water, we're gonna patch the cable and hopefully get this fountain going again. Because this is going in water, we are going to make sure that this stays nice and dry. So I'm going to heat shrink this multiple, multiple times, different layers, different spots. So before you start, you got to throw your heat shrink jacket on because you can't get it on afterwards. Again, this is the side at the fountain and because it's the side of the fountain, I want to make sure that we're really Got a nice seal. The other side will be on land, so if it happens to fail, it won't be shortened out right away. So I got my first crimp done. So this is a heat shrink style crimp. So now that I've got it crimped, I heat it up. And this will actually help bond that plastic jacketing. So the first heat shrink is on. Now I center my next heat shrink. And this heat shrink has an adhesive lining, so it's gonna help hold it from pulling apart and just to really help it be more waterproof. So you know it's good because the glue is squeezing out the end there. One done, three to go. Let that cool down. Just gonna make sure the area that we're adhering to is nice and dry. sheeting that's on here, I'll put back on top. I'll stop the fish from nibbling on it. That's the reason why I made the joint here as well, so that this would come on and go over top. That will stop fish from chewing on it. should stop any mice from when it's sitting out. How's it going, kiddos? Hi, Calvin. Hi. 
So I've got my new cable um, connected. What I'm gonna do is put a cord end on this cable. Um, previously, the cable went underground, went into the greenhouse and connects to a timer. And that's what turns this on and off. But that's meant that we can't really take the pump out and store it properly for the winter. We've been storing it sitting on the rocks here every winter so that it's out of the water and isn't getting frozen. Uh, we drain it and store it there. But that problem, the problem was the mice this past winter sort of found the cable and chewed it. So I'm gonna put a cord end on this so I can remove it every fall and uh, put it away safely in the sea can, keep it away from the mice. But the fountain is ready to go in. Keep this cord on, on the shore and we will uh, get the fountain in. Hey Jules, you want to come hold the end of the cord? So I'm going to pull this in the water. You may end up having to walk on the rocks a little bit. Yeah. Fish food? Nice. Good. Throw some in there, far. by the teeth marks. Don't milk yourself. Okay. What are you doing with that? We keep that on there. I gotta keep this on there. And then you do what? It, uh, it's called heat shrink, so it shrinks around it and stops water from getting. Wow! Is that like milk? Yep. Oh. I think uh, we're at the point where we can test this out. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. Yes, I can. So, do you want to? Um, you guys want to stand on the dock here, and I will turn it on. Okay, so we've got both of these uh, ends heat shrinked, put together. I'm keeping the heat shrink out of the water just for a minute, but we're gonna start the fountain up. So I'm gonna go plug it in, and the boys are gonna stand out here and yell and scream if it starts working. Sound good, boys? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, here we go, boys. at the GFI. What? Is it working? Awesome. Oh, chickens are nervous. Calvin, you want to see? Come on, let's go outside. We'll go look. We're going to get the dye and put some dye in as well. 
and get this pond looking awesome. So the fountain's going, looks awesome. What I'm gonna do now is, uh, the water's a little greenish brown. We've got some algae in it. Again, we did suck a bunch from the creek, so I'm gonna put a little pond dye in. It's gonna turn it blue, which will sort of limit the amount of algae that can grow in it, the amount of light that can get into it. And it's just gonna make the pond look like 10 times better. So we'll put a little bit of this in on both sides. Now that the pump is going, um, it'll circulate the water enough to, to spread it around. No, I'm gonna put dye in. So this dye is like black, it's super concentrated. Mm -hmm. Then you'll be blue for a couple days. That sounds fun. That sounds fun? Yeah. You want to be blue? So that's gonna mix in. Um, again, it's just deep blue pond dye. I used maybe half the container. What about the turtles? Eh, the turtles will be okay as well. I used maybe half the container. Um, again, it's because it's the very first application of the season. That's why I've used so much. And then this container will last me the whole season. It'll keep the pond sort of nice turquoisey blue, which is what I like. And it'll look awesome. It's safe for plants, it's safe for fish, uh, it's safe for like irrigating and watering our chickens and all that sort of stuff. Ideally, I don't want the kids jumping in it today because I don't want them looking like blue smurfs. Like a drop of this stuff will stain you for a while. So, that little... so 24 hours later, the pond doesn't look crazy dark anymore. It doesn't look brown. It's got a nice teal color to it. If it wasn't so overcast, you'd really be able to see the hues of blue in it, but it looks beautiful. Thanks for watching Half Dozen Homestead, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Oh, we're going to show you a quick clip too of Juliet planted some peach seeds she had. Stay tuned. You want to show how you smashed that one open? I smashed them open like this. And you get peach seeds. So inside the pit is the seed? Yeah. And then what do you do with them? I planted them. Let's go see. So there's two peach seeds in each of these, except for this one. Um, and you watered them? I watered them. They look like they could use a little more water. So if you put the tray on the ground, give them a little more water. Okay. And then we're going to see what grows, hey? Yeah. Say thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Half Dozen Homestead. See you later.